For the past few weeks, we've been seeing product releases from all the big hitters, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and now it looks like Google wants in on that action. On Thursday, Google announced the release of the new Nexus 5. It's the biggest screen yet in the Nexus phone line, and of course, we've got it on our teardown table, so let's jump right in. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're looking at Google's brand new Nexus 5. Maintaining the Nexus's no-nonsense sleek and minimal design, the new Nexus measures in at 137.84 millimeters by 69.17 and is 8.59 millimeters thick. The Nexus 5 weighs in at 130 grams. The screen is up from the Nexus 4's 4.7 inch to an impressive 4.95 inch full HD IPS panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and a pixel density of 445 pixels per inch. Opening the device was a nice change of pace for us this time. After the slew of tablets we've been tearing down, we were extremely happy to give our eye opener a break and get into the Nexus 5 the old fashioned way with just an opening tool. Plastic clips instead of glue makes us very happy campers. Oh no, we may have spoken too soon. We found a tad bit of adhesive at the bottom of the phone, but our opening pick makes quick work of that and we're in. On our way to the battery, we got our first look at the Nexus 5's wireless charging pad. This is a great feature that allows you to charge your phone without using those pesky charging cables. This battery is a 3.8 volt, 2300 milliamp hour battery that Google is claiming will give you 17 hours of talk time, 300 hours of standby, or seven hours of LTE web browsing. Fortunately for us, Google used the bare minimum of adhesive for holding the battery in place, making it easy enough to remove while still holding it in securely. Thank you, Google. With the battery out, we turn our attention to the motherboard. With the twist of our spudger, the motherboard comes right out. Attached to the motherboard is a wireless charging control and NFC board. Interestingly enough, this daughter board is serving dual duty, acting as an EMI shield as well. The Nexus 5 has been given lots of upgrades, starting with the Snapdragon 800 2.26 gigahertz processor. We also see that the 5 is capable of 802.11ac thanks to this Broadcom chip. And while the Nexus 4 did not officially support LTE, it looks like the Nexus 5 will thanks to this Qualcomm chip. When we get all the way down to the front panel, we're sad to see that Google is back to its Nexus 4 bad habit of fusing the LCD to the front glass. We had such high hopes for you, Nexus 5. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The Nexus 5 got a eight out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the modular design allows for independent replacement of several wear-prone components. There's only mild adhesive holding the battery in place, making it fairly easy to remove and replace. Standardized screws simplify repairs and reassembly. And the one and only major downside is the glass and LCD are fused to the display frame. Fixing broken glass will be either expensive or very difficult. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.